Okay, thank you. So the last time we started with data types, we ended, but we didn't go through the tutorial set. So I want us to go through the tutorial set before we start with hypothesis. Okay, before we start with hypothesis, so that it will kind of be a fresher. Okay, so can we start? Yes, please. Okay, so like we're doing, it's going to be interactive. So I would be demanding answers from you. And at every point in time that you want to talk, you raise your hand. I will call you, you will mute yourself, and then you talk. So the first question says, which of the following variables is an example of an ordinal variable? Which of the following variables is an example of an ordinal variable? This is how I want us to ask uh, answer the question. Okay, this is how I want us to answer the question. For each of the possible answers, when I read the possible answers, you will give me the type of data and the level of measurement. Then when we finish, we will know which one is the answer. Okay, For, so I'll read each of the I'll read each of the uh, possible answers. Then you give me, you raise your hand, I call you, you give me the type of data and the level of measurements. Okay, then when we finish, out of that, we'll get to know the answer automatically. So which of the following variables is an example of an ordinal variable? So the first says the grade obtained by a student in research methods. So the grade obtained by a student in research methods, what is, what data, what type of data is it? And the level of measurement, Princess. Categorical data. Categorical data, and what is the level of measurement? Mm -hmm. Yes, Princess, you are still, you are the one you have to finish it. Categorical data, what's the level of measurement? Nominal. Nominal? Okay, Janet, the same A. You give me the type of data and the level okay. of measurement. Okay, I think um, categorical ordinal. Categorical ordinal. So uh, we have Categorical nominal by uh, Princess and categorical ordinal by Janet. Princess, why are you saying it is nominal? Can you explain yourself? Princess, why are you saying nominal? Can you explain yourself? Princess, are you there? Princess. Hello. Yeah, are you there? Yes, please. Can you explain why you're saying it is nominal? Um, I chose nominal because I think it can't be ordered. Okay, so you think it can't be ordered. So if uh, I put the grades of, what are the grades that you can get in research methods? Mention those grades. A, B, C, D. A, B, B plus. C, C plus. If I put these, if I mix them and I say arrange them in order, can you? Yes, please. So can they be ordered? Yes, please. So then it becomes what? Categorical ordinal. Good. So Janet was correct. It's categorical 
ordinal. Okay, B, the time it takes to write a test. Uh -huh. The time it takes to write a test. Yes, the time it takes to write a test. Benjamin. Say categorical. Categorical. Uh -huh. At the level of measurement. Um, um, nominal. Nominal, the time, time, time. If we're talking of time. Ordinal. <laughs> so let someone else try. So, uh, Al Hassan, Lisa. Numerical. Numerical. Time is number. Eh? Benjamin, time is number. Time it takes to write a test. And I say this is categorical. So, uh, Lisa, what is the level of measurement? Ratio. Ratio. Ratio, thank you. Now see the geographic region of the country in which you live. Uh, is it uh, uh, Joy or G-E-O-O-Y? The geographic region of the country in which you live. Steve. Um, so it's actually, I'm not answering your question. I wanted to ask the time it takes. Um, why is it not the time it takes? You want to ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Why is it not interval? But why is it ratio? I was thinking interval anyway. Why know. do you think it is interval? I think um, it's continuous in a sense that, like four, um, four, five. Yeah, it's not a whole number. It's not a, a whole number. So. I think it can't be ratio, but since it's a running, it's called. What is not a whole number? When you're mentioning time, like you mentioned it's 4, 5, 4, 15. So I'm thinking in that sense, it makes it interval, like an interval the that takes time, from the day. The time that it takes to write a test, you are not mentioning the time of the day. Oh, okay, okay, okay. The time, is, so I'm taking two hours to write the test. I'm taking three hours to write the test. It's not the hour of the day or the time of the day. The time it takes to write a test. I can also take two minutes, two hours, 35 minutes. You get it. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay. So who is answering that question for the geographic region of the country in which you live? Yes, Etty. Says categorical nominal. Categorical nominal, thank you. The mark scored by a student in an exam. Yes, the mark scored by a student in an exam. Yes, did he? Numerical ratio. Numerical ratio, thank you very much. So at the end of the day, which one was the correct one? The question was, which of the following variables is an example of an ordinal variable? So which one was the correct? A, A right? Yes, please. Exactly. Now, which of the following is most likely a continuous numerical variable? A continuous numerical variable. So all of them are numerical, first of all, because number of gallons is numerical, number of reams of paper order, numerical, population of Accra, numerical, the number of kilometers of highways in Ghana, it's also numerical, but which one is continuous? So it goes on and on and on and on, kind of. So which of them will go on and on and on and on? Yes. Aram. The D, the number of kilometers. Exactly. Of highways the number of kilometers of highways in Ghana, because the number of gallons of paint patches cannot go on and on and on. The number of reams of paper order cannot go on and on. The population of Accra in 2005 is stagnant. 
it is the number of kilometers of highways in Ghana that can go on and on and on. Question three, which of the following is a nominal variable? Which of the following is a nominal variable? So we are answering the question like the way we answered question one. The blood pressure levels of CEO, which type of data and what is the level of measurement? Yes, who will help us? Yes, who is ready to help us? The blood pressure levels of CEUs. What type of data is it? And the level of measurement. Yes, Anita. Hello, sir. Yeah, you are on the floor. Um, please, SD. No. <laughs> uh, the blood pressure levels of CU. Tell me the type of data and the level of measurement. Sir, I'm not saying your answer is correct, but that is not what I'm expecting from you. I want you to tell me the A. Tell me the uh, type of data and the level of measurement. Sir, please, it's um, numerical ordinal. The blood pressure level of CEUs. Numerical ordinal. Numerical ordinal. Why are you saying it is numerical? Hmm? The level of blood pressure. Okay, Benjamin, help us. Uh, please, numerical ratio. Numerical ratio. Why are you saying it is numerical? Yeah, because um, it's, it's, it's written in num uh, I mean, numbers and it's not a uh, ratio. Have you checked your blood pressure level before? Blood pressure level? No, no yes. Sir. <laughs> But I think it's recorded as two numbers, a written uh, as a ratio. Any other idea, any other uh, view? So Benjamin, lower your hand. Any other view, blood pressure level? Courage, do you want to talk? Blood pressure level. Now, what are the levels of BP? That we have. Yes, Princess. High and low. High, low, normal. Now, high, low, normal, are they numbers? Are they numbers? No. So, is it a numerical and uh, variable? No, eh? Is it a numerical variable? I just think it, I'm seeing numbers. You check what? My blood pressure and I'm seeing numbers. So what is there, your blood pressure level? Uh, give me the number. <laughs> I can't tell you. It's, it's, it's one, one, one something, hundred and something. I'm, I'm seeing so we numbers. term the levels as high, low, or normal. I get to the point. We term the blood pressure uh, level. So he has a high BP, oh. high blood pressure, or he has a low blood pressure, or the blood pressure is normal. So it is categorical and not numerical. Okay. Then if it is categorical, is it nominal or ordinal? Nominal. Nominal. Nominal or ordinal? Nominal. Ordinal. Nominal. Ordinal. Ordinal. Does the meaning, does the order make sense? Eh? Does yes. the order make sense? Low, high, normal. Does it make sense? Is the order yes. meaningful? Yes. Yes. yes, it does. Yes, it, it makes sense. Because if you go to the hospital and they tell you that you have a normal blood pressure or the uh, doctor tells you that you have a high blood pressure there's a cause for alarm 
So the order makes sense. Therefore, it is an ordinal variable. Okay, ordinal variable. So it is categorical ordinal. Now, bank account balance of the vice chancellor. What type of data and what is the level of measurement? Yes, Aram. Oh, I want to see more this one. The, the same people, yes, Aram. It is, it is numerical variable. Uh -huh. Numerical, yes, but what's the ratio. level of ratio? Thank you very much. Now, ratings of firms. Ratings of firms. What type of variable? And what is the level of measurement? Today. Did they? Um, is numerical ordinal. The last time I told you that, I told you the type of data and the levels of measurement under them. People are putting some levels of measurement under certain data types. For example, they, they told us numerical ordinal. Sorry. It's ordinal and a numerical type of data. No, please. So please come again. Okay. Um, numerical ratio. Ratings of firm. The day you say numerical ratio. Okay. Princess, what do you also say? Categorical nominal. Princess is telling us it is categorical nominal. Thank you. Abena Yabwa. Sir. What do you think? So I think it is. Categorical ordinal. Categorical ordinal. Your last person. Susanna, what do you think? So I also think it's categorical ordinal. So the correct is categorical ordinal. Okay, ratings of firms. So for example, when we take uh, even the schools that we we're choosing, eh? when, when we're in, THS, when we're about to complete THS, we we're made to choose senior high schools. You realize that they had put the senior high schools into various categories category A, category B, category C. Where uh, the categories were they making sense? Were the order or is, is the order making sense? Or is the order meaningful? Yes, it was. Yes, yes everyone wanted to. Go to a category A school, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, people, everyone wanted to go to category A school. So it tells also that the order is meaningful. The same, so the rating of firms is categorical, ordinal. It is not numerical, okay? It is not numerical, it is categorical, ordinal. Yes, Samuel. And sir, please, I want to ask a question. Ask. Um, I feel like some of the things are not so straightforward. For example, the ratings, you are describing it as categorical, but then ratings can also be done on a scale, like let's say a scale of one to 10. In a situation like that, it will be numerical. So some of these things, how do we so, know? For example, give me an example of the scale of one to 10. How will you rate? Let's say, in term, are you going to write it in terms of percentage? No, like, okay, there are some certain restaurants, when you go, they will ask you to rate their service on a scale of one to 10. So you can say maybe nine over 10, that is quite good. two over 10 is bad, something like that. But if, for example, you take uh, hotels, eh? if you take hotels, for example, we have one star hotel, two star, three star, four star, five star hotel. Do you think it is categorical or numerical? Say, so personally, I'll say numerical. So why is it is numerical? Because five star, five is a number. And the star is? The star is a unit of measurement. <laughs> so 
when we talk of ratings, okay, we look at, we don't focus on the number. Even if you are focused on the number, based on the number, we have the level or something of that sort. So ratings, okay, when you rate something, you are not just rating the, uh, the server, we are rating the whole firm on a particular level. So ratings of organizations or firms is categorical and not numerical. You can rate uh, countries based on their credit worthiness. So we have uh, a country, category A, category B, uh, because based on how they are able to pay their debts and all that. So ratings, okay, every time you have ratings, it's categorical and ordinary. Because you can order the ratings. So if you put it under numerical, how will you put it? You say it is ratio. No. Mm. So yeah. it is categorical ordinary. Thank you. Then sure. the eye colors of five students. Categorical, yes. nominal. Numerical. Categorical. Categorical. Nominal. Nominal. That's good. Because if you put red, green, blue, and we say <laughs> order them, I don't know how you are going to order them. Therefore, the correct answer is D, as someone earlier on told us. Now, what is the correct order of data from the weakest or lowest to the strongest or highest? Who can tell me? I told you the last time. A. A, nominal followed by ordinal followed by interval and ratio. That is correct. Now, Dr. Ohene Asare, who is in charge of research methods, He's a lecturer for the research method. He will take you. So Dr. Ohene Asare graduated from Warwick University with a code value of one, while Professor Boateng graduated from Manchester University with a code value of two. The scale of measurement likely represented by this information is Dr. Ohene Asare graduated from Warwick University with a code value of one. While Professor Boateng graduated from Manchester University with a code value of two. The scale of measurement likely represented by this information is, who can tell us? Yes, Aram. Nominal. It's nominal, that is correct. Okay, it is nominal. Don't go and say ratio, because you can see one, two. You think it is a uh, numerical. No. The last time someone asked coding and ranking. Coding, we only represent the responses with numbers. It doesn't make it a numerical variable. Okay, so sometimes for easy uh, answering, we say take one, take Warwick to be one, and this one to two. When you, when you take one, we know that you are going with Warwick. Mm -hmm. So that one is nominal. Thank you very much. Now, there are types of variables which produce responses that belongs to groups or categories, such as responses to yes or no questions are called yes. Mm -hmm. The types, the type of variables which produces responses to yes or no questions are called categorical variables. Thank you very much, Esther. Categorical variables. Now, which of the following statement is or are incorrect? So take note, incorrect. Ordinal data may be described as qualitative. Nominal data may be described as quantitative. A categorical variable may produce ordinal data. A, dis a discrete numerical variable may produce ratio scale data. So which of them is or are incorrect? Sh uh, Shalin. Step B, nominal data may be described as quantitative. Thank you very much. 
because ordinal data is under categorical, which is also called qualitative. Categorical variable produces can produce ordinal data, and numerical can produce ratio. But and nominal data is not under quantitative. Thank you very much, Shalem. A variable is described as ordinal if A, there is a natural ordering of categories. B, there is no natural ordering. C, the data arise from continuous measurement. D, the variable is tracked over a period of time. Yes, I want more hands, more new hands. Eh? So far, the same hands, the same hands. Okay, let me call uh, Jennifer. Oh no, Jennifer, this hand is not up. Let me call Emmanuel. Emmanuel. A. 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 A, there's a natural ordering of categories. That is very good. Now, which of the following statements involve descript, uh, descriptive statistics? as opposed to inferential statistics. Which of the following involves, which of the following statement involves descriptive stats as opposed to inferential stats? Now, when we talk of descriptive statistics, we are basically looking at describing, okay? Descriptive, describe. So we can describe the data using the, let's say the total, we can describe the data using the, the, uh, the, the mean. We can describe the data using the standard deviation. So for when we talk of descriptive statistics, you are basically describing, okay? You are basically describing the data uh, using certain tendencies or central tendencies like mean, standard deviation, and all others. Now, when we talk of inferential statistics, so you are, we are kind of generalizing, okay? You are making inf uh, inferences. So you are generalizing based on something like a small percentage or you are, you are generalizing for the whole population based on a sample. Okay, so based on the sample, you are generalizing for the whole population. So that is inferential. Okay, so A says that, so based on the uh, difference I have given between descriptive and inferential. So descriptive, you are describing. Okay, inferential, you are generalizing based on a sample. So let us. Tell me which one is descriptive. Okay. Now, 30% of the 380 magazine readers prefer double column articles. The police service reported that Kumasi had 1825 registered gun dealers in 2013. The fire service sampled 425 fire uh, disasters in order to estimate the percentage due to job-related uh, stress. From a sample of 350 players, a magazine reports that 23% of the players, parents did not play ball. So which one of them, or which of them will involves the data being described or involves descriptive stats? Yes, who can tell me, who can try? B. B, the police reported that Kumasi had 1825 uh, registered gun dealers. Exactly. So this one, they are describing the data. That's the, with the total. So the total, describing the data with the total. Okay. The others are inferential. Okay. The others are in French, thank you very much. Now the last one, an automobile insurance agent believes that company A is more reliable than company B. Which level of measurement does this information represent? Yes, Aram. Ordinal. 
odd now. Thank you very much. Odd now. Okay. So in terms of reliability, company A comes ahead of company B. So there's an order there. Okay. Thank you very much. So that is the end of tutorial set one. Okay, that's the end of tutorial set one. Any question? If you don't have a question, put your hand down. If you have a question, let's uh, keep your hand up. Okay, Shalin. Shalin, do you have a question? Sir, sorry, I'm, I'm putting my hand down. Okay, Janet, do you have a question? Yes, please. Okay, so ask me. Question four and five. Question um, four and question five. Yes. Please. Question four is what is the correct order? So the answer was what? A, nominal, followed by ordinal, interval, and ratio. Please take these, uh, these questions we are doing serious. Take them serious because some of them do come in your exam. Okay, some of them do come in your exam. So please take them serious. And then you said question five. Question five is A, nominal. Yeah, I was in question four was the basis for the um, arrangement. Yeah, the last time I told you that I gave you the weakest to the lowest. The highest is ratio, the lowest is nominal. So we have nominal. Nominal is under categorical. The other does not make sense. Okay. Then we have ordinal. Ordinal is under categorical, but the other makes sense. Now, the interval and ratio, okay, are under what? Numerical. Interval is ahead of what? Ordinal. Because interval looks at what? Numbers. That can also be ordered. Okay, and ratio is the highest. So ratio is also numbers. That can also be what order because when we take four and we take five, five is greater than four. So it can be ordered and that is under numerical. Okay, so the lowest is nominal and the highest is what ratio. Take note of that. Any other question? Janet, do you used to have a question? And the question five. The five. We are saying that Warwick University has been represented with a code value of one, whilst Manchester University has been represented with a code value of two. The fact that you see one and two does not mean it is a numerical variable. We are just coding them. Okay. So the response itself is Warwick University and not one. The response itself is Warwick University and Manchester University which is what categorical variable, okay? Which is categorical variable. And this one, the order does not make sense. So it is numerical, uh, nominal. Okay, thank you very much. You are welcome. Any other question? Keep your hand down. Any other question? So if there are no further questions, we move on to hypothesis, the next topic. So we are moving on to hypothesis. Hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing. So take note that uh, research methods, the quantitative part is an upgrade kind of an upgrade of what you did in quantitative methods. So 
some of the things you did under quanti, especially from confidence interval, okay, from confidence interval all the way to correlation and regression, we'll see them under research methods, the quantitative part, okay, but yeah. you, you, you will not do confidence interval as a topic in research methods, but then when you get to correlation and regression, you can be asked to develop a confidence interval for a particular uh, a particular uh, variable. Yeah, Shalin. Sir, please, we didn't treat confidence interval last semester. You didn't treat it. Well, you were supposed to treat it, so you know, no problem. So we are starting with hypothesis testing, and I'm sure you have heard about it, okay? Already, you did it under uh, uh, quantitative methods, okay? But we are going to do it here too, okay? We are going to do it here too. So, when we talk of hypothesis, now hypothesis is a statement Or, is, or we can say a hypothesis is a claim. It can be a claim. It can be an assumption. It can be a belief. Okay, a claim, an assumption, a belief about a population or made about a population parameter. So hypothesis is a claim, an assumption, sometimes a belief that is made about a population parameter. Okay, such as the mean the standard deviation. So the population parameter can be mean or standard deviation. Okay, so day in, day out, we make claims that whether intentionally or unintentionally, we make claims. In our daily lives, we make claims. In business life, Businesses tend, tend to make claims. Even in the uh, courts, claims are also made. So assumptions and beliefs are also made. We are saying that when the claim is made, we have to be able to prove the claim. Okay, we have to be able to prove the claim, subject the claim, to statistical torture. Okay, so that is what we are going to do under hypothesis. We are going to help to prove or disprove people's word claims or claims made by people. Yes, so well, that is what we are going to do here. So we are saying that hypothesis can be a claim, it can be an assumption, it can be a belief that usually people make about a population parameter. It can also be a question. Okay, it can also be a question. For example, is University of Ghana the best university in Ghana? It's hypothesis. It can also be a question. Okay, it can also be a question. So that is what the definition of hypothesis. Now I am going to follow the steps in solving hypothesis question to teach. Okay, I'm going to follow the steps. Then when we finish, we'll now solve questions. So when you are solving a hypothesis question, okay, the first step is to formulate the null and alternate hypothesis. So that's step one. 
is to formulate your null and alternate hypothesis. The first step is to formulate the null and alternate hypothesis. That's the first step in solving hypothesis questions. So from this, we can see that there are two types of hypothesis. Okay, there are two types of hypothesis. We have the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is represented with what you call H, H O. or H not, okay, H O. This is how we usually write it. This is how we write it. H, then you put the O, the not below it like this. Okay, but I don't want to be doing this drawing. So if you see H zero, it's H O. Okay, the now hypothesis is represented with H O. And what is the null hypothesis? Now, the null hypothesis is a populative or an authoritative statement that a researcher puts forward. Okay, it is, so this particular hypothesis is a populative So this is the definition of the now hypothesis. It's a populative or an authoritative statement that a researcher, a researcher puts forward, either because it is believed to be true or forms the basis for the argument, but not proven. Okay, it is believed to be true. People believe this is the truth. Though it is not what proving. That is the now hypothesis. And we are saying that it is an authoritative statement. Take note of that. It's an authoritative word statement. Let me use this scenario to explain the authoritative statement. For example, if the lecturer for research methods should be teaching and tells you that, hey, all of you, all of you are going to pass research methods. Okay, all of you are going to pass research methods. This is the statement from the lecturer himself. And maybe one of your colleagues, okay, one of your colleagues or your class rep tells you that, hey, all of you are going to pass research methods. Whose statement will you believe more? Who, whose statement will you believe more? Is it the lecturer or the, your class rep? The lecturer. The lecturer's 
a statement. Why? Because the lecturer is an authority. He is the one who is going to mark and grade you in this course. So if the lecturer tells you that you all of you are going to pass your or all of you are going to pass research methods, that is an authority. So it is an authoritative word statement. Another scenario is maybe uh, BHDCR is about to hold uh, elections. And then the electoral commissioner for BHDCR comes out and says that he believes all right, that he, uh, he, 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 he says that this uh, BHDCR elections that we are going to hold, this candidate will win. That is what the electoral commissioner for BHDCR comes to say, even though the election hasn't been held. But the electoral commissioner for BHDCR comes out and says that this particular candidate will win. Then another person, a campaign, let's say a campaign manager for one of the candidates, also comes and says that this particular candidate or his candidate will win. Whose statement are you likely to believe more? Yes, I want to respond. Whose statement are you likely to believe more? Who? Electoral commission. The electoral commissioner. Why? Because he is an authority. I get to the point. He is what an authority. So that is what I mean by an authoritative word statement. So it is an authoritative statement put forward by the researcher. Why? Because it is believed to be true. Because that is what a lot of people know, and that is what we all know. So it is also called the status quo. The now hypothesis is also called the status quo. Okay, that is what we all know. So concerning what the researcher is, 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 is researching or is going to make inquiry into, this is what the population knows about it. So it is called the status quo. So we assume that particular statement to be true in the conduct of the research. So the null hypothesis is a statement that is assumed to be true in the conduct of the test. So the researcher puts that particular statement forward and holds that statement to be true in the conduct of the test, even though that statement has not been proven. No one has proved it, but that is what we all believe. Are you getting the point? So for example, if a particular doctor should come out today and say that he believes that doctor tells, uh, says that he believes that the average number of months for pregnancy is six months. That is what the, uh, that, that, that particular doctor is saying. He says that the average number of months for pregnancy is six months. And we are supposed to test the claim of, or the belief. I told you that hypothesis can be a claim, a belief. So he believes, it can be a belief. So we are supposed to test this hypothesis. What will be the status quo? What do we all know about the number of months for pregnancy? We all know it is how many months? Nine months. Nine months. Nine months. Are you getting a point? So in the conduct of this particular test, we hold the nine months to be true until proving otherwise. Okay, until proving what? Otherwise. So that is the now hypothesis. That is the now hypothesis. It is what we all know, what everyone knows. So if I go to the court right now and tell the court that, hey, do you know that, excuse me to say, I'm using this as an example, no hard feelings. Hey, do you know that uh, uh, the PhDCR president is a thief? Now, we all know that this man is not a thief. We all know, but I am saying he's a thief. So we have to try, we have to try the case. Now in trying the case, the court holds that this person or the BJCR president is not a thief. So that is what we all know. And that is the now hypothesis. Okay, that is the now hypothesis. 
So we are going to learn how to formulate the null hypothesis. Now, in formulating the null hypothesis, there are certain signs. Okay, these are the signs that occur in the null hypothesis. The signs that occur in the null hypothesis are greater than or equal to less than or equal to and equal to. Okay, greater than or equal to less than or equal to. Oh. Greater than or equal to less than or equal to and equal to. So these are the signs that are contained in the null hypothesis. Take note that the null hypothesis must have some form of equality. Okay, some form of equality. So greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and equal to. And there are certain words in English that represents these signs. So you have words like at least. At least is greater than or equal to. At most. Most is less than or equal to. Is. Is equal to. Was. Is equal to. Of is equal to not different from is also equal to. Okay, so at least at most is of not different from. These words are not exhaustive. If I say they are not exhaustive, it means that they are more. As they are more, okay? You will see them as we move forward. I cannot put all of them out of the head now. So these are certain words in English that corresponds to signs like this, okay? So at least is what? Greater than or equal to. At most is less than or equal to. Is is equal to, was is equal to, of is equal to, not different from is what is equal to. So when you are reading the claim, when you are reading the claim and you see certain words like this, then you know that, oh, so if I see at least in the claim, then I'll know that, oh, at least represents or corresponds to greater than or equal to, then you know that greater than or equal to should be in the HO. Okay, should be in the HO. And take note that the hypothesis is always about the population parameter. Therefore, it is mu. Okay, it is what? Mu. So you use the mu to uh, formulate the mu that we're seeing in uh, quantity. That's a mu. So an example of a null hypothesis is. H O is such that, okay, I'll use U as my mu, okay? Mu is greater than or equal to, let's say three, okay? Mu is greater than or equal to three. So this is an example of a null hypothesis. So please take note of the signs that are contained in the null hypothesis. Greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and equal to. If you put any other sign other than this in your null hypothesis, you are wrong. And these are certain words that represent the signs. Okay, these are certain words that represent the signs. Are we okay? Now let's proceed to the other type of hypothesis, alternate hypothesis. Now, alternate hypothesis is represented with HA. It 
H A. H sub A, the A is sub. Okay, H A. That is the sign for alternate hypothesis. And we are saying that the alternate hypothesis is the opposite of the now hypothesis. And it seeks to challenge the now hypothesis. Now, the now hypothesis, the alternate hypothesis is the opposite of the now hypothesis. Okay, and it usually seeks to challenge the status quo. I told you that the now hypothesis is the status quo. That is what we all know. That is what we all believe, even though that thing has not been proven. But that is what we all know. So it seeks to challenge the status quo. And it's sometimes called the researcher's hypothesis. Okay, that is the alternate hypothesis. So take note that it is always the opposite of the now hypothesis. So I gave an example. We all know that the number of months for pregnancy is nine months. This particular doctor comes out and says that that thing is not nine months. So that particular doctor is challenging what we all know. Okay, some time ago, the world was living with the idea that the earth was flat. Okay, the earth was flat. That was the idea, or that was the the the, the knowledge that the then people existent on the earth had. That the earth was flat. So you know that. They had not proven it, but that particular knowledge has not been proven. No one has proved it, but that was the knowledge they all had that the earth was flat. Now, someone comes into the scene and says that the earth was spherical. So that person, so for example, the earth was flat. That was the now hypothesis. Because that is what they all knew. That's what everyone knows. Now, someone comes in and says that, hey, the earth was not flat. The earth is spherical. So that person is, the, that the claim of that person is the alternate. He's challenging what everyone knows. Unfortunately, this person was put to death. Now, along the line, they had to test the person's claim. The person said the earth was spherical and they had to test. And they realized that truly the earth was spherical. So they had to throw away the knowledge that the earth was warm, was flat. So now what we all know is that the earth is spherical. Maybe someone amongst us can stand up tomorrow and say that the earth is box. So that person too is coming to challenge what we all know now. So now we all know that the earth is spherical. Someone can come to the scene and challenge it again. So I am just using this to explain to you now an alternate hypothesis. So now is what everyone knows, even though the thing has not been proven. Alternate comes in to challenge the status quo, what everyone knows. And it's sometimes called the researcher's hypothesis. Now, these are the signs that are contained in the alternate hypothesis. So when you are formulating an alternate hypothesis, these are the signs. The signs are less than, greater than, and not equal to. Okay, less than, 
greater than and not equal to. These are the signs that are contained in the alternate hypothesis. Less than, greater than, and not equal to. So take note. Okay, less than, greater than, and not equal to. And we have certain words that corresponds to these signs. So we have words like uh, above. Above is greater than. Below is less than. Exceed. Exceed is greater than. Different from. Different from is not equal to. Uh, above, below, younger than, younger than is less than, okay, we have less than itself, more than, more than is greater than, so they are not exhaustive, these are some of them, okay, they are not exhaustive, so these are certain words, English, in English, that corresponds to this mathematical word, science. Okay. So an example of a now of an alternate hypothesis is if I should formulate H A is such that mu. I said I'm using you to represent my mu because I cannot be drawing it, but you have to write it well, and this is how I, I wrote it. So mu is less than uh Three. So this is an example of an alternate hypothesis. Yes, Shalin. That is a different from sign. The different from is not equal to. I have to cross it. Okay. Different from is not equal to. So put your hand down. After asking your question, put your hand down. So different from is not equal to. Charlie, you still have a question? Oh, okay, thank you. So that is it. So that is how to formulate the alternate hypothesis. Okay. So when you are reading the claim, you're, you have to look out for these, some of these words. That will give you the idea of the sign. And when you are able to get the sign, you, are, you must know which, alternate, which hypothesis will contain that sign. Then what? You formulate. Okay, so take note that you will not have both signs in a particular claim. You only have one of the sign there. So when you have the sign, the opposite of that sign will be in the other hypothesis. So if I have, for example, I get a sign like greater than. Okay, if I get a sign like greater than, what will be the opposite of greater than? Yes, who can tell me? What will be the opposite of greater than? Less than. Less than. The opposite of greater than is what? Less, less than. than. It's less than. The opposite of greater than is what? So less than. Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. Thank less you. Less than or equal to. But the opposite of greater than is more less than. The opposite of greater than is less than or equal to. Because if I say that you should get a score of, uh, okay, let me, let me change it. The age of the child is not greater than three. Okay, the age of the child is not greater than three. What are the numbers which are not greater than three? Yes. Two and one. Two and one. Yes. What are the numbers which are not greater than three? Zero, one, two, and three. Zero, one, two, and three. Is three included? Yes. yes. Numbers which are not greater than three. Is three included? Yes. 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 So it means that 
the opposite of greater than is not less than, but less than or what equal to. Because if I say that the age of the child should not be greater than three, that means that it should be zero, one, two, and three, or three. You shouldn't go above three. That is what it means. And above three, numbers above three are foregoing. So take note of the, of the opposites. Okay, so the opposite of greater than is not less than. The opposite of greater than is less than or equal to. What is the opposite of less than? Uh, greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. That is very good. And what is the opposite of equal to? Not greater than or less than. <laughs> what is the opposite of equal to? Not equal to. Not equal to. Not equal to. Not equal to. Someone was saying greater than or less than. So if the thing is, is either equal to or not equal to. So the opposite of equal to is not equal to. Therefore, this is it. If you formulate HO, so this is HO. These are the signs that are contained in HO. HO is such that, okay, your mu should be greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and then equal to. The opposite should be HA. So HA will read such that mu, the opposite of greater than or equal to is less than. Okay. Then the opposite of less than or equal to is greater than. Then the opposite of equal to is not equal to. So greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, and then not equal to. So if you get greater than or equal to, then the opposite will be greater uh, less than. If you get less than, then the opposite will be greater than or equal to. That's what it means. If you get less than or equal to, the opposite will be greater than. If you get greater than, the opposite will be less than or equal to. If you get equal to, the opposite will be not equal to. And if you get not equal to, the opposite will be equal to. That's all. So you will have both signs. You only have one of the signs that you must know the opposite to formulate the other. I hope it is understood. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, then sir. Of, now, formulating the null and alternate hypothesis is very critical to solving the question because it is from that that you are able to identify the tail that you are doing. So we have the tail of test. We have what you call tail of test. We have what you call tail of test. Okay, so we have what one tail, one tail test. One tail test means that that particular thing is moving in one direction. So how do you determine the tail of test? You use the HA to determine the tail of test. So and for one tail test, the HA should contain greater than or less than. Okay, should contain greater than or less than. That is for one tail test. Now I have two tail. Two tail test. The HA contains not equal to. Okay, not equal to. So this is how to determine the tail of test. So if you formulate it correctly, then you can be able to know 
the tail of test also correctly. So you look at your HA to identify your tail of test. If it is greater than, it means that it is moving in one direction above. And it's called upper tail. Okay, one tail, upper tail, above. If it is less than, it is moving in one direction below. If it is not equal to, then it means it can be greater than and it can be less than. So we call that two tail. Okay, because it can move greater, it can move less. So we call it two tail. If it is greater, only above. If it is less than, only below. So that one is one tail. If it is not equal to, it is two tail because it can be greater and it can be less. Are we okay? Jennifer. Yes, yeah, sir, please explain that again, please. I'm saying that when you have formulated your now and alternate hypothesis, you use that to determine the tie, the tail of test that you are doing. And I say we have one tail test. One tail test, your HA should contain less than or greater than finish. And for two tail tests, your HA should contain not equal to. Are you okay, Jennifer? Yes, please. So, sir, okay. with this, is it always alternative hypothesis? Same yes, check. Use your alternative okay. hypothesis to check. To oh, be on okay. the side. Use it to check. Okay. Yes. Okay, sir. So, having done this, before we, we continue with the other steps, we are going to learn how to formulate hypothesis from certain claims then before, uh, so that you can get it. Okay, then we proceed. Okay, so that you can get it, then we proceed. So we are reading this. Next Cafe Ghana. Next Cafe Ghana claims that since the population mean feeling weight is at least three pounds per can, consumers' rights are protected. Next Cafe Ghana claims that since the population mean feeling weight is at least three pounds per can, consumers' rights are protected. So to formulate the null and alternate hypothesis, you have to know the claim. And from the claim, or you have to know the hypothesis, then from it, look out for those words that I, I gave. Check out for those words and know the sign that they correspond to and the hypothesis in which they are found. Then you can proceed. So next cafe claims that since the population mean feeling weight is at least three pounds, consumers' rights are protected. Now, which word or group of words here corresponds to a sign? Yes, raise up your hand and talk. Which word or group of words correspond to a sign? Emmanuel, Emmanuel Owusu. Sir, so please, at least. At least, at least. So at least corresponds to yes. a sign. Um, at greater least than or equal to So three. at least corresponds to greater than or equal to. At least corresponds to greater than or equal to. That's good. So greater than or equal to is contained in which hypothesis? Now, now hypothesis. Now hypothesis. So HO is such that mu is greater than or equal to three. Three. So what is the opposite of greater than or equal to? Less than. It's less than. Less than three. Is less than three. So which tail is this? Is it one tail or two tail? One tail. One tail. It's one tail. That is very good. It's one tail. 
let's proceed and do more. Now, Max Flight uses a high technology manufacturing process to produce golf balls with a mean driving distance of 295 yards. Max Flight uses a high technology manufacturing process to produce golf balls with a mean driving distance of 295 yards. Which word or group of words here correspond to a sign? Yes, raise your hand and talk. Anita. Anita, you're on the floor. Or oh, your hand was not up. Yo, Steve. Steve. Say please off. Pardon? Please off. 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 So Steve, off corresponds to which sign? Uh, equal to. Equal to. And that is contained in which hypothesis? As in two tests. So. That is contained in H O or H A. H O. H O. Okay. So H O is such that mu is equal to 295. Okay. The H A is such that mu is not equal. So what's the opposite of equal to? It's not equal to. It's equal to. 295. And which tail is this? Two tails. Two tails. Two tails. Two tails. That's good. Two tails. So let's. So that's it. So two tails. So according to the CEO, according to the CEO, the new BMW car can run more than 24 miles per gallon. According to the CEO, the new BMW car can run more than 24 miles per gallon. Which word or group of words here corresponds to a sign? Jennifer? Say more than. More than. And more than is? Say greater than. Sign? Greater than. And greater than is contained in which hypothesis? Alternative. Alternative hypothesis. So H A. So HA is such that mu is greater than 24. So what sign will be in the HO? It's less than or equal less to than or equal. That is good. So it's less than or equal to 24. Which tail is this? Why no, one tail. tail. One tail, that is very good. Until people are doing well, mm -hmm. doing well. says by your health, uh, but you people are doing well. Let's go. So teacher now, well. Ghana Telecom Manager thinks that customer monthly cell phone bill average not at most 52 Ghana City per month. Ghana Telecom Manager thinks that customer monthly cell phone bill. Average not at most 52 Ghana CD per month. Who is ready to help me? If you are, if you have not heard your voice, I want to hear your voice. If you are, if you have iPhone, if you are. Say please at most. At most. If you are at most corresponds to what sign? Um, less than or equal to. And that is contained in which hypothesis? Um, no hypothesis. No. That is very good. So H O H O is such that mu mu is less than or equal to fifty two. Then H A is such that mu is greater than. Oh, I should have asked you, but it's okay. Fifty two. So which two? Are we doing? One two. I keep asking you which two because it's important. We'll get to a point that you will know that it is important. Okay, it's important.
So the minimum wage in Ghana this 2015 is not at most. It's not at most six. I believe you can formulate for that. Now let, let's let's formulate for this. Suppose that we want to test the yeah. hypothesis that the climate has changed since industrialization. If the mean temperature throughout history is not as improved as 50 degrees, what is the null and alternate hypothesis? So not as improved as the, it says if the mean temperature throughout history is not as improved as 50 degrees, what is the null and alternate hypothesis? Which word there or group of words correspond to a sign? Yes, Nanaya. And please, I want to ask a question. I want okay. can you please kindly explain the tail of test again? I'm not really getting it. The tail of test is we have one tail test and we have two tail tests. Do you understand that one? Yes, please. Now, how do I identify one tail test? Use the HA. If the HA contains greater than or less than, it is one tail. Are you okay? Yes, please, thank you. And, and if the HA contains not equal to, then you are doing two tails. So please, if I have not asked a question, keep your hand down so that I'll know those who are asking questions and those who are answering questions. Because if your hand is up, whilst I'm asking a question, I think you are about to answer my question. So Janet, are you asking a question or answering my question? I'm asking a question. Okay, ask. The previous questions that we saw, mm -hmm. I was saying not at most. So I, not at I was, most. Yes, yeah, so I was Is thinking it to be at least. Uh -huh. So you were thinking? It to be at least. You were thinking it will be what? It's at least. At least. Yes. Yes, this is not at most. No, you see, don't forget about the not and use the ones I've given you at most. Because if the thing is at most, at most is what? It's what sign? At most is what sign? Le uh, less than or equal to, right? Yes, please. So, so look at this, look at this one here. Look at this one here. Eh, look at this. Look at this. I'm circling this. At most, it's less than or equal to, isn't it? Eh? Yes. Good. So if that thing is not at most, it means that thing is not less than or equal to, isn't it? Yes. Please. So if that thing is not less than or equal to, then it is what? It's greater than. Uh -huh. So that is what you have in the HA. Oh, okay. So it is not at least. So don't replace them at most with any other way. Oh, Do you understand okay. it? Yes, so if yes. that thing is not at most, then that thing is not less than or greater, uh, less than or equal to. So if that thing is not less than or equal to, then it is greater than, and that's what you find in the HA. Okay, this is talking about the alternate hypothesis. Exactly. Yes, any other question? If you have a question, keep your hand up. You may see. You may see, do you have a question? Okay, you don't have a question. So I want, and I want us to answer this. So it says that if the mean temperature throughout history is not as improved as 50 degrees, what is the null and alternate hypothesis? Which word or group of words here corresponds to a sign? Who will help me? Anita. Anita, you are on floor. Okay, Anita is not ready to talk. Let me give the opportunity to Asa. Asa, you are on floor. As improved as. Pardon? As improved as. Yo, so improved corresponds to which sign? 
I'm asking of improved. Equal to. Improved is equal to? Greater than or equal to. Improved is greater than or equal to? Greater than. Improved is greater than or equal to? It's greater than. Improved, improved is not equal to? It's greater than. So if I say your GPA has improved, what does it mean? Greater than. Greater than. Which means that your GPA has increased, isn't it? Yes, sir. So it is greater than. So greater than is contained in which hypothesis? Alternate. 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 And what will be the opposite? The opposite is what? Less than, less than or equal to. And that will be in the world. The now hypothesis. The now hypothesis. So that is what you have here. Okay. That is what you have here. Now let's check some claims from the. Okay. You let's finish before we, we go to the claims in the tutorial set. Okay. Let's finish. So I hope now. You uh, you know you can uh, formulate now. Yes. Okay. Ask so, your question. Uh, the question we just answered. Yes. There was a uh, one of the words that also indicates equal to the word is not as improved. So if from this, uh, if you want to go back where you were giving the indicators, you said is of was. So when, when, the, the is? when the this one comes, when the number comes immediately after the is, that is where you use is. But when you see is at least, is at most, is less than, is greater than, is more than, forget about the is. Do you, do you understand it? Hello, to Messi. Yes, sir. Thank so you. So when you hear maybe it's 25, then you have to use S. But when you see it's at least, you don't have to use the S because another word comes after the S. Thank you, sir. That's good. Thank you. So that is how to formulate the null and alternate hypothesis. That's the first step. The first step, actually, when we're solving a question is, it's very simple or doesn't take a lot of time. But when we're explaining, it takes a lot of time. Anita, your hand is up. Anita, your hand is up. Sir, please, my hand was up. Sorry. You have a question? Margaret, no, please. your hand is up. Yes, sir, please. I had wanted to ask whether the not doesn't affect um, the alternative hypothesis. I was thinking it is not as improved. You see, I don't want you to focus on the not because whether you use the not or do not use the not, you get your science correctly. Because the not as improved. Take the improved. Improved is greater than. So not as improved, it's less than or equal to. And that was the, that, that one you automatically find it using the opposite uh, sign. Margaret, okay. do you get it? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So they, even though the word says not as improved, I want you to focus on the improve. Get the sign for the improve. The opposite will automatically correspond to the not as improved. Okay, thank you. You are welcome. Lower your hand. Okay, let's proceed. So that is that is how to formulate the null and alternate hypothesis. Then the second step. So that's a first step, but the others they are simple, simple because formulating the null and alternate hypothesis, you have to understand it. That's why I have to take a lot of time to do that for us to even solve examples. Okay. So 
The second step, the second step The second step, step two, is to calculate the test statistic. Is to calculate the test statistic. And the, and, the, and the critical value. That's a step two. Okay, is that the step two? So the test statistic, we have the T test. The T, the T is given as X bar minus mu. over sample standard deviation over root of n. So this is the formula for calculating the test statistic. So x bar minus mu all over s over root of n. Okay, there's a formula for calculating the test statistics. We also have Z, but under research methods, you won't, okay. We, have to, we also have Z, but the Z is X bar, minus mu over the population standard deviation over n, over root of n. So x bar minus mu all over the population standard deviation, okay, over root of n. Now you use the you use the t when your n is less than 30. So the t is used when n is less than 30. That is when the sample is small. Okay, your n, that's the sample size, is less than 30. So when your sample size is less than 30, you use the t. And when your sample size is greater than or equal to 30, use the Z. Okay, so you use the T when your N is less than 30 and use the Z when your N is greater than or equal to 30, but mostly in the questions we are going to solve, we are going to use T, okay, some small samples. So when your sample is small, use T, when your sample is large, use Z, and how large is large? So when your N is greater than or equal to 30. Okay, but we we'll mostly use T. So that is the test statistic. Okay, then the critical value, you determine the critical value based on what you call alpha. Alpha is called level of significance. Okay, the critical value is determined based on what you call alpha. I'll use small a to represent my alpha. So the critical value is T alpha, T alpha N minus one. The N minus one is called degrees of freedom. Okay, that's a critical value. Is T alpha n minus one? Please, that's my alpha. Okay, T alpha 
n minus one. The n minus one is called degrees of freedom. And you go and read it from the T table. Okay, from the T table. Let me show you how the, the T table, I'll show you the T table as we move ahead. I'm putting it on my laptop so that I can display it. Okay, so that is the third, uh, second step. Then the third step is to determine the P value. Okay, the third step is to determine the P value. I'm coming, I'm putting the table on my PC so that I can display it. So the third, Step three. Find the P value. Find the P value. Okay. Of the test statistic. Find the p-value of the test statistic. So this is the T table that I'm talking about. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, your hand was up. So this is the T table. Say, yes, Emmanuel. Say, um, um, please, can you go over the critical? Yes. So the critical value. value, we are saying that the critical value is T. We have Z, but we will not use it. Okay. We will not use okay, it. Sir. So we'll only be using the T. That's why I've put critical values T alpha. The alpha is will be given in the question. If alpha is not given, the default alpha is 5%. Take put this one somewhere. If alpha is not given, choose 5%. Sometimes they'll give the okay. question, they will not give you alpha. You take 5%. So okay. T alpha n minus one. You go and read this from the T table, and this is the T table. Bearing in mind the tail you are doing. Okay, this is a T table. So this is the DF. This is where you read the DF, the N minus one, the degrees of freedom. This is where you read it. Then you have to look at the tail that you are doing. That's why I was basing on which tail are you doing from the first step. So if it is one tail, you read the alpha from the one tail column. And if it is two tails, you read the alpha from the two tail column. Then you will locate the critical value from the pool. Okay. We will solve example so that you can understand it better. This one is just two. this one. Okay, so that's a T table. Yes, Benny. And um, so you said if alpha is not given, it's five percent. What? What is alpha? Five percent. Five percent. Five percent. Okay. So, thank, thank you. Okay. So lower your hand after asking your okay. question. Lower thank your. Thank you, sir. Okay, that's it. So the, when it gets to step three, finding the p-value of the test statistic, that one you come to the table and find the test statistic from the pool and locate its alpha. We'll solve example for you to understand it better. Then the last step is to decide and conclude. Okay, the last step, step four, is to decide and conclude. 
step four, take a decision and conclude. That's step four, take a decision and conclude. Now, how do you decide? Now, the decision we are going to take is either to reject the null hypothesis or, or what? We are going to reject the null hypothesis or what? Who can con con continue for me? We say. Reject the null hypothesis or? Do not, do not reject. reject. Or fail to reject. Or fail to reject. Fail to reject. Fail to reject. We don't accept. Okay, don't ever go and write that we are accepting the null hypothesis. We don't accept the null hypothesis. We are, hypothesis is like the courtroom. Either you are guilty or not guilty. They don't have innocent in the courtroom. Because the fact that the person is not guilty does not mean that the person is innocent. Maybe they didn't get enough evidence to convict the person. So they term you as not guilty and not innocent. Okay, not guilty, but not innocent. Man. So you are either going to reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. That's the decision you are going to take. So how, what is the decision rule? We have to, so going with the critical value approach, Going with the critical value approach, the decision rule is, so let me write, let me write this, decision rule. Decision rule. Critical value approach. So for the critical value approach, the decision rule is reject HO. Reject HO if your T cal, T calculated. The T calculated is the same as the test statistic. The T statistic is greater than the T critical. Okay, so that's the decision rule. Otherwise, what to reject? So reject HO. If the T cow is greater than the T critical, otherwise what to reject? So that is the step two. If the test statistic is greater than the critical value, reject HO. The test statistic is the T calculated and the critical value is the T critical. Reject HO. Otherwise, fail to reject. That's the decision rule for critical value approach. Now we also have p-value approach. So for the p-value approach, we are saying that reject HO. Reject HO if p-value is less than alpha. Otherwise, fail to reject. So 
So that's a decision rule for p-value approach. So this is your alpha. Okay, so reject HO if p-value is less than alpha, otherwise we'll reject. Well, and the interesting thing is that whether you are going with the critical value or the p-value approach, you should have the same decision. Your decision should not be different. If your decision is different, you have to check what you have done well. Then the last step is to conclude. Okay, your last step is to conclude. Is to conclude when you have taken the decision. So we are going to solve maybe two questions to get a deeper understanding. The next time we meet, we'll solve more questions on it before we go to the next topic, okay? Any question before we move on? Any question before we move on? So in the absence of any question, let's start. So we are going to start with formulating the null and alternate hypothesis from these. So that's tutorial set two. Formulate the null and alternate hypothesis for the following statement. I want someone very vocal with a nice, sweet voice to read for us. Okay. So if, if the word sweet comes in and you are a guy and your voice is not sweet. Go. So please, there's Mamiya. Okay. So Jay, Jay, Hi. I will, okay, Jay, read for us. Your high cry is sweeter, so read for us. <laughs> okay, question one. The state lottery office claims that the average household income of those people playing the lottery is at least $37,000. So that is the claim. Which word there or group of words there correspond to a sign? And which sign? And which hypothesis will contain that sign? One person will answer that or that question. So who is ready to answer that? Jay, lower your hand. Okay, Nana, Nana Addison. Yes. So the null hypothesis is mu is greater than or equal to 37,000. How did you get the greater than or equal to? At least. At least, okay. And then the alternate hypothesis is mu is less than 37,000. So which tail? For the is a one ta tail test. Thank you very much. Okay. The one who is reading, Jay, let's go. Next question. Okay, question two. The marketing department for a hand calculator claims the battery pack performs 20,000 calculations before it has to be recharged. Yo, who is ready to help us? Who is ready to help us? Yes, who is ready to help us? Jay, you are, okay, you want to help us? Who is ready to help us? Who is ready to help us? The marketing department for a hand calculator uh, claims that the battery can perform 20,000. Okay, Jennifer, help us. So, so we are using before. Before? <laughs> Be <laughs> okay if you are using before which which sign will before it correspond to? So, so it means um less than or equals to twenty thousand. Yeah, no, before does not correspond to. Uh, it's not one of those things where that correspond to a sign. Richie, Richie. Uh, so, so it performs twenty thousand. Uh -huh. So I think. It gives us the range, so uh, probably equal to twenty thousand before it has to be charged. So it's equal, probably, to, exactly. Yes, please. So it's equal to, okay. It performs twenty thousand, so equal to twenty thousand. Okay. okay. So that is it. It's equal to, and equal to will be in the word. Which hypothesis? So equal to is them. Um, equal to is part of the the now hypothesis. It's in the now and yes, please. So. It will be in there now. And the alternative will be what? Not equal to. Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. Jay, let's go. Number three. 
A pharmaceutical manufacturer is concerned that the mean impurity concentration in pills should not exceed 3%. So which word there correspond to a sign, princess? Should not exceed. So what sign? Less than or equal to in. Now, hypothes now mm -hmm. hypothesis is such that mu is less than or equal to 3%. And okay. alternate hypothesis is such that mu is greater than 3% and it's a one till test. Thank you very much. So she decided to go with should not exceed, which is less than or equal to. Another person can use the exceed and exceed will be greater than, which will be in the alternate. Then the, its opposite will be less than or equal to, which this one went. All of us will arrive at the same answer. So no problem. Okay, question four. A company selling new, new econometrics. 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 econometrics computer software advertises that firms using the software obtain on an on average during the first year a yield of not at least 10% on their initial investment. Okay, so which word there? Correspond to a sign, and which sign would that be, and where will it be, and which tail? Who is ready to help us? Hey, the same hand, eh? The rest. I will now call for random of Trish, Tricia, Victor, uh, Susanna. <laughs> eh, Tricia, Victor, Susanna, Rebecca, Princess Kendra, Priscilla, Nana, Ishra, Ninoi, Na, Na. All of you, Marbina, Laurentia, all of you, please. Mamiya. Yo, Mamiya. Okay, let me call Margaret. Um, say, it now hypothesis. HO is such that mean is greater than or equal to 10. So how did you find a greater than or equal to from where? At least. At least. Okay. At least. Then the HA will be what? HA is such that mu is less than 10. Yo. So which tail? Um, one or two? It tail? is one, one tail. Yo, thank you. Jay, let's go. A professional rock climber. Uh, hello, say. Yes. Jay, let's go. A professional rock climber claims that he can climb a particular mountain within half an hour. Yo, who is ready to help me? Who is ready to help me? Hello, sir. Yes. Um, please, can she come? Yes, a question. Okay, ask. That question on. four, I think she said her um, now hypothesis was new was greater than or equal to 10, right? Or Yes, yes, that's what she but said. But they said a yield of not at least. Yo, so what do you think? I think the, 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 the alternate is greater than 10%, and which makes the now less than or equal to 10%. At, at least is which time? At least is greater than. Are you sure? That, 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 that's what I give you. At least. Yeah, okay. At least is which sign? Greater, greater than, than, or, greater than or, equal or equal to. At least is greater than or equal to. We are not greater than. Greater than or equal to, yes. So what is the opposite of greater than or equal to? Less than. And that would be in the alternate. Yeah. So are you okay now? Yes. Are you sure you are okay? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So, the question five has already been read. Who is ready to help us? So who is ready to help us? If you are ready to help us, put up your hand. You may see. Okay, let me call. You may see. Let me give the opportunity to Nana. Let me give the opportunity to Nana. Nana. Nana love. Nana with the love attached. Uh -huh. Yeah, hello, sir. Yeah. Um, please. The question is um the word here is within half an hour. 
So, what so do in you that think? case, it's going to be less than or equal to. Okay, so the word is less than or equal to, and that is contained in which hypothesis? That's the um, now hypothesis. Okay, and what so, tail would, would that be? That would be a one tail. Thank you very much. Do you agree? So within is less than or equal to. Okay, within is less than or equal to. As for question six, I know you can do it. So let's solve one full question. Hello, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sir, please come again with the question five. I didn't understand what you said. A professional rock climber claims that he can climb a particular mountain within half an hour. Eh? Within half an hour. So the word here is within. That's a key word that corresponds to a sign. And that is less than or equal to. Oh, okay, okay. So whenever we see within, it's it's less than or equal. Exactly, exactly. Okay, thank you. So let's solve yeah. one <laughs> one full yeah. question. Sounds awesome. Yeah. Let's solve one full question, then we'll end the class. The next time we meet, we'll solve uh, uh, the tutorial sets. Oh, if you people will permit me, we can solve two. I don't know if you people will permit me. Okay. So who is reading for me? Um, please, should I read? Yes, you can read. Okay. Suppose that you are thinking of taking over an SME. The current owner claims the weekly turnover of each existing SME is not different from 5,000 Ghana cities. And at this level, you are willing to take on the SME. You would be more cautious if the turnover is beyond this. It's below. Uh, it's below this. Figure. Is the, figure, okay. It's, be, it's below this figure. You examine the books of 26 SMEs chosen at random and and average. And that's the average. And that the average turnover was 49, 4,900 Ghana cities with standard deviation of 280 cities. What would you? Two. Yo. So suppose that you are thinking of taking over an SME. The current owner claims the weekly turnover of each existing SME is not different from 5,000 Ghana cities. And at this level, you are willing to take on the SME. You would be more courteous if the turnover is below this figure. You examine the books of 26 SMEs chosen at random and that the average turnover was 49,000, 4,900, with a standard deviation of 280. What will you do? So if you were the one, what will you do? Will you take that particular SME? Or will you take the SME? Will you take it on? They said that uh, they, they are claiming that that thing is not different from 5,000. But when you examined, you got 4,900. And they are saying that, you will be more courteous if it is below. It means that you will not take it. Will you do it? Will you take it or you will not take it? 
Yes, I want responses. Yes, or you, or you don't understand the question. Please, do you understand the question? I'm test to see. Do you understand the question? No, please. You are no. You want to uh, take over an SME. It means that you, are, you want to buy an SME, a particular business. They are claiming that they are weekly turnover. Turnover is the same as sales. Okay, the current owner is claiming that their weekly turnover is not different from 5,000. And they are saying that once it is 5,000, you are willing to take on the SME. But if it is below 5,000, you will be more courteous. Now you examine the book of 26 and the average turnover was 4,900. Would you take on the SME? What would you do? Will you take on the SME? You will not take it. You will not take it. Why? Why would you take it? Because he said anything below the 5,000 should be rejected. Yeah. You, will be, you will be more courteous if it is below. So why won't you take it? Because, uh, because it says that examined. anything so. below the figure, which is 5,000, should be rejected. And the 4,900 is below the 5,000. So you will not take it? Yes, please. Well, exactly. So you will not just look at, one thing about statistics is that you don't just look at the face value and decide. You may be wrong. OK, so we have to subject this to statistical torture. That is test the hypothesis before we can say whether we will take the SME or will not take the SME. So let's do that. So to do that, the first step is to what? Formulate the null and alternate hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Now, to formulate the null and alternate hypothesis, you have to look for the claim. What is the claim in the question? Yes, who can read the claim for me? What is the claim? Yes, Jay. And please, the claim is that the current owner claims the weekly turnover of each existing SME is not different from 5,000. OK, so which word here? or group of words correspond to a sign. So you have to identify the claim in the question. And from the claim, you get a group of words there. So Anita. Say not different from. Not different from. Yes. So which that's, sign does not And that is equal to, uh, yeah, it's equal to. Equal to. Equal to, and that is contained in which hypothesis? No hypothesis. So H. Oh. H oh yeah. It's such that mu is equal to, equal to five thousand. Five thousand. Then H A says that what are you talking about? That ten is not equal to five thousand. That's the opposite. That's it. So you have formulated the null and alternate hypothesis. But you have to understand what you have formulated. You have to understand, because if you don't understand, you cannot be able to conclude. That's the last step. So in simple terms, HO is saying that the current weekly turnovers, turnover is, is 5,000. That's all. Then HA is saying that that thing is not 5,000. So if it's not 5,000, it means it can be more than 5,000. It can also be less than 5,000. And that makes it what tail? Two tail. What tail? Two tail. Two tail. Some of you, you have been singing into our ears. Huh? You take it like that. So two tails. So that is it. Now, step two is to what? Calculate the test statistic. Now, before you calculate the test statistic, please make sure in exams you always write these the parameters. So mu is 5,000. X bar is 4,900. 
standard deviation is 280. N, N is 26. Please make sure in exams you always write these things. Then the question I will now ask is, how do I know which one is my mu and which one is my X bar? Now the mu is called population mean. Okay, the mu is population mean and the X bar is sample mean. How do I know my population mean? How do I know that this is my population mean? And how do I know that this is my sample mean? Who can help us? How do I know this 5,000? How did I know that it is population mean? And this 4,900, how did I know that it is sample mean? Who can help us? Yes. Uh, Atta. Okay, so um, in the question, it was like, you examined the books of 26 SMEs. So it's like you sampled out 26. Okay. And it gave you an average of 4,900. So that becomes your... So that becomes the what? So from that, you are able to tell that that is what? Sample mean, okay. Any other way? Grace? Um, say, so for me, even if I was not to like understand some of the words there, I think since it's a sample, the population is always more than the sample. No, so population, just... <laughs> population is always more than sample. Take note of that. Yeah. Exactly. The so the greater no 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 the population mean is not always more than the sample mean. The population mean can be lower than the sample mean. Really? Yes. Okay. The population okay. mean can be lower than the sample mean. So put that out of your head. Okay. Now, thank you. Now, Anita, you'll be the last. Yes, Anita. <laughs> Say, um, please, I'm sure I'll try. I think the one we we'll use in the claim hypothesis um, testing with the, the now and the alternative, the one we we'll use there will be our population. And the one that will be, the other one that will be in the question will be the sample mean. Yo, thank you. But the sure way to identify the sample mean is that always the standard deviation follows the sample mean. That's a sure way. So take note of that. The standard deviation follows the sample mean. When the mean is mentioned and standard deviation does not follow it, then that is a population mean. The standard deviation always follow the sample mean. That is the sure way to get it. So take note of that. Okay. Take note of that. Yo, so let's proceed. So please come again. I said the sure way to identify the sample mean is that the standard deviation follows the sample mean. So I realized that here they said you are having 26 okay. SMEs so. chosen around, and the average turnover was 4,900 with a standard deviation of, it tells you that that 4,900 is the sample mean. Are you okay? Are we okay? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. Let's solve this question and then we we'll close. Now, so we have formulated the null and alternate hypothesis. The next step is to calculate the T car. I know. Oh. So T, please mute yourself. T car, the formula is X bar minus mu over standard deviation over root of what? N. So our X bar is 4,900 minus mu of 5,000 over S of 280 over, stand, over root of 26. Please. Calculate that for me.
Yes, what did you get? So you yes. won the two times, huh? Yes. Minus one point eight two one zero. So negative. One point eight two. So T how is equal to negative one point what eight two. Eight two one, yeah. H2, four that's one place is H2. One zero. One zero. One one. Your one one. So that's the T cow. They will look for the T critical. Okay, T crit. So T crit. T critical. It's equal to T alpha N minus one. Now, what is our alpha? Who can tell me what our alpha will be? Yes, just say it for me. 0.025. Eh? 5%. Our alpha will be 5%. 5%, but because it's a two tailed. 5%. No, take your yes. time. No, take your time. Our Thank alpha you. is five percent. Five percent. Zero point zero five. Yes. Forget about dividing the alpha by two. Here in research methods, we don't divide by two. Oh. Our alpha is five percent. And then n is twenty six. So twenty six minus one will give us what? Twenty five. That's the degrees of freedom. So this is T alpha N minus one. So T 0 0.0, 0 0.05. So we'll go and read this from the table. This is the table. Look at it. Now, the table, I said that in research method, we don't divide the alpha by two because the table has one tail and two tails, alphas already. So if you are, your, your, this one is one tail, you choose it from the one tail column. If it is two tail, you choose it from the two tail column. That's all. So don't go and divide alpha by two, please. So here it is two tails. So we choose our alpha from the two tail, which is 0 0.05. Then the degrees of freedom is here. So our degrees of freedom is what? 25, right? Yes. So you locate the 25 to the 0 0.05 column under the two tails. And what do we get? 0 0.060. 2.060. 2.060. I hope we are all clear how we read it. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, 2.060. So, 2.060. Now, going with a critical value approach, what will be our decision? Now, when we are deciding, forget about Use the absolute value, okay? When you are deciding, forget about negatives and use the absolute value. So the absolute value will be T uh, will be T car. Okay, is equal to 1.8211. You put that one in two bars. Okay, two bars like this to show that this is an absolute value. So what will be our decision going with a critical value approach? Who can help us? Will you reject HO or feel to reject HO? Yes. Yeah. Uh, don't talk out of this one. Let me call Anita. 
Anita. Mm -hmm. Anita, you're on floor. Say, um, I do not reject it. Why? Why is not rejecting it? Because our T calculated is greater than our T critical. What is the decision rule? Our T calculated A. So our T calculated is 1.8211. Uh -huh. And our T critical was 2.060. So are you rejecting or failing to reject? So we are failing to reject rather. Why? Because our T, our T calculated is less than our T critical. Exactly. The decision rule says reject if it is greater than. But here you check and the T cal is less than the T critical. So you fail to reject. Okay, so this is how you decide decision. Since T cal of 1.8211 is less than T crate or T tabulated of 2.060, we fail to reject HO at alpha at alpha equal to 0 0.05. Okay, so put the T cow in two bars because it is an absolute value at alpha equal to 0 0.05. So that's the decision. Okay, that's the decision. Since T cal of 1.8211 less than T crit of two points, we fail to reject HO at alpha 0 0.05. That is where we are going with the critical value approach. Now, when you want to go with the p-value approach, you go and look for this 1.8211 from the pool to identify the p-value. Okay, so that is how to do the p-value. Go to the table and look for the, the calculated value, the one you calculated, the t cal. go and look for that value. So 1.8211. We'll go and look for it from these plenty numbers. Okay, you go and look for it from these plenty numbers. Eh? You go and look for it. So 1.82, 1.8, 1.8, so you got 1.8, so 1.833 is here. So I think that's the closest. 1.833 is the closest. You may not you may not get it exactly. So 1.833 is the closest. And it is under know the tail you are doing. The tail is two tails. So that is 0 0.1. Okay, so the p value is 0 0.1. Please help. Go to the table and look for the test statistic that you get. 1.8, So they are all under 0 0.1. So our p-value is equal to 1, uh, 0 0.1.
So going with the p-value approach, are we rejecting HO or failure to reject? Our p-value is 0 0.1 and alpha is 0 0.05. Mm -hmm. Let me use A for alpha. Small A for alpha. Alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Zero five. Are you rejecting or failing to reject going with the p-value approach? Yeah, it's true. Still fail to reject. Why are you failing to reject? Because zero point one is. Uh -huh. Because zero point one is more than zero point zero five. Good. Because p-value, the rule says that reject if the p-value is less than. But here, p-value is greater than, so reject. We will fail to reject. So, since p value of zero point point one zero point one greater than alpha. Alpha equal to 0 0.05. We fail to reject H O. That's all. So you see that whether we go with the critical value approach or p-value approach, we should reach the same decision. Now the last thing. If you want to conclude, it's, it's 5,000. That's what he's trying to say. And we have rejected it. Hey, sorry. We have, we did not reject HO. Okay. The, the owner is claiming that it's not different from 5,000. And we do not reject HO. It means that the thing is 5,000 actually. Because we did not reject HO. So our focus is on the HO before you come to the HA. If you fail to reject, if you reject HO, then you are going with HA. If you do not reject HO, then you are still going with HO. That's what it simply means. So the owner is saying that the weekly turnover is not different from 5,000. It simply means it's 5,000. That thing is 5,000. And we do not reject HO. So it means that it is 5,000. Please do you understand it. Hello? Yes, sir. Please, please. Yes. So the owner says that thing is not different from 5,000. It means that thing is 5,000. And we do not reject it. So that thing is 5,000. So conclusion is that there is enough evidence. Okay, conclusion. So there is enough evidence that the weekly turnover of the SME of, of the SMEs is not different from 
Okay, it's not different from 5,000. Therefore, the SMU should be taken over. That's all. Okay, because to us, there's evidence that that thing is 5,000. Then you can take over the SMU. That's the conclusion. So you do not just look at the face value. You realize that when I asked you, will you take it? You said, no, 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 because it was 4,900. But subjecting it to statistical torture, we realize that that thing is still 5,000. Therefore, you have to take it. Okay, so that is what hypothesis testing helps us. We don't just look at the face value to conclude. You have to test it and, you, and then you are able to make correct decisions. So at this child, welcome one or two questions. If any, then we closed. We are all tired. At our next meeting, we'll solve more on this before we go to hypothesis for two samples. Okay, don't worry, we'll finish the quantitative part within this stipulated time. So that even if you are not able to tackle the quality aspect, when you come to school, you can spend more time on the quality so they can get good, good grade. Okay. Any question? Any question? Please, any question? Yo. Yes, if there are no questions, then we call it a day. So have a good night and have a good weekend. We'll Thank you. 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 Th